How's it going YouTube? Van Damage here with a, another update on my build. Uh, so if you've been following this, you have seen that I got the program running on my Raspberry Pi, this guy right here. Uh, the screen is working. I had to finagle one of the HDMI cables in order to get it to fit, but it wasn't enough of a, you know, it wasn't enough of a tweak to it to warrant doing a video on. All I did was cut off some plastic from it and call that good. If you have any questions on how I did it, I can... I can do a video on it, I guess, but until I get a request, I'm not going to bother. Um, so, you know, pardon the mess, but I am getting ready to start putting everything together inside this Pelican 1120 case. Um, you know, it's not really too big. Uh, what I had originally planned on doing was mounting it inside of the case itself so that I could, you know, open it up. Oop, don't want to bust my screen up, but yeah, so that I could open it up and you could see everything in here, all the internal workings, and then, you know, play it off of the screen. But I decided against that because this particular monitor right here, um, it's a little too deep, as you can see with the board on it. Um, this was, this, this, it's a good monitor, don't get me wrong, or a good screen, don't get me wrong. But I wish they had actually integrated this board with the, with the screen itself. I've seen uh, different ones where they've done that, and it easily it, they're easily half the width of this thing. Um, but for my first build, I'm not really worried too much about you know having everything internal. Uh, I'm gonna probably end up putting you know posts here so that I can, you know, prop it up at an angle or, you know, maybe do a latch on the back. I need to pull that sticker off, but, you know, put something on the back. That way I can prop it up and play my games on it. But for now, um, all I'm going to be doing today is showing you guys what exactly I'm, the process is on doing it. Uh, so far, uh, I, I'll give you a real quick rundown. Um, you can't see it. Well, you can barely see it. But I've marked the lines already on where the screen is going to fit through. Uh, the whole screen's not going to pop through it. Uh, basically, I measured out the distance between the gray line, the gray areas on here, and this is going to rest against the inside of the case. You'll see the entire screen. Um, let me see. I do have some clear plastic. You can't really see it, but it's right. Yeah, here it is. Right here. You can see it here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to also cut this to the size of the hole that, I've, that I'm about to cut out. Uh, I'm going to plop that in there. And what I'm doing is the leftover pieces from, you know, this thin stuff here and this thicker stuff here. What I'm going to do is make some longer brackets that are basically going to clamp over top of the screen to hold it in place. Um, I hope... I can get it to work the way I'm expecting it to. Um, it's gonna it's gonna require a lot of measuring and a lot of real fine tweaks. So, uh, you know, let me go get let me get started on this, and I'll shoot as I progress. So it's probably gonna take me an hour to get to the next step, but you know, for you guys, it'll be just a few seconds. So give me one second. Okay, guys, as you can see, I've drilled four holes. Uh, these are basically going to be the pilot holes for my jigsaw here. So basically, what's going to happen if I can get it in, I'm going to put the jigsaw in and just cut straight down the line. Um, I basically just drilled these holes to make sure that I had a good spot to start off with. Uh, once I'm done, you know, cutting across, up and down, I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit this with a file and just make sure I got a nice sharp corner here or I might just leave it rounded but uh, till then I am going to cut across this I'm gonna make sure I'd still have some nice dark lines that I can easily see and then I'm gonna be back in just a second so let me cut this out and I will show you how everything is fitting so far okay guys as you can see I've already got the screen in uh, it's a little difficult getting this squared out the way I wanted it to. Basically, I measured it out to what I thought the measurements were, but I accidentally read my ruler wrong, so instead of going 152 centimeters, or 157 centimeters, I went 152, which was a cross. So I basically just took my Dremel, because the router, or the uh, jigsaw didn't work, and I flipped the 
block that or the uh, piece I was using to cut it, I flipped that around instead of having you know paper side out. I flipped it around like this so I could actually stick it up against it and kind of wheedle it away to where I needed it be needed it to be. Uh, it's kind of affixed right now, but not really. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to get the spacing done right now. So I'm running it off of a rechargeable battery pack down here. Um, I think this is what I'm going to wind up using for the overall project. Um, I've been, yeah, you know, I tested out a smaller one, an 8400, uh, what is it, amp hour, milliamp hour? And it lasted just shy of six hours before I shut it off because I didn't want to run the battery pack completely dead. Uh, this one right here is a 20,400 that I bought at a, uh, the store right down the road. So hopefully that'll work. But as far as how the screen's set in here, basically I've used double tape right now. I'm probably going to leave that in there. It seems to be holding it fairly well because it's, uh, I guess the glass is actually sticking to it very nicely. And it's sticking to the plastic casing better than I had seen it do in the past. Uh, but this isn't going to be the end all solution. I'm actually, the uh, these plastic panels that I have, I'm going to measure out a length of it, stick it over top, you know, in here, so it's going to sit over this, and then I'm going to just screw it in on the ends to hold it down if I can, or instead of that, what I might end up doing is drilling bolt holes here and here, probably two each, and then just screwing it down as hard as I can get it, uh, and then do the same over here. It'll be obviously a thinner piece that I use, but, you know, same concept. So that's how it's going so far. Um, I have finally, I figured out how I'm going to get this in here. Uh, basically, I'm going to use the same plastic pieces because I like to be able to see what I've done. And uh, so I'm going to use a plastic piece. It's only going to cover about half of it. And then it's going to sit in on top of here. Like you can see little ridges right here. So it's going to sit on top of that. And it's only going to be halfway through it. I'm going to leave all my cable over here. That way I can disconnect it from the battery whenever I'm done using it. And uh, the way that you have to, that I've found the Raspberry Pi works, you have to, I can go in through the program, shut it off, but it'll still have power to it. But because everything's going to be internal, I have to shut off the Raspberry Pi, open it up, and then disconnect everything. And I think in the long run, that's going to be the uh, best way for me to do this because I don't want to end up, you know, disconnecting the power from it and without it properly shutting it off. But yeah, I'm getting there. Uh, so here's how it's going so far. Let me get back to cutting and I'll do another little segment whenever I finish with that. So give me about you know, five seconds and I'll show you. Okay guys, let me show you where I'm at. Uh, I know earlier I said I was gonna use some of that clear stuff, but I had a little extra left over for them whenever I cut out the square in the front. Uh, so what I did was I just measured out the short end over here and You know cut out a section long enough that would fit here and use the remainder for the bigger end that you know I had a lot of playroom on uh, So what I did I don't know how well you can see it But I drew a black line going up and down to make sure that I didn't hit this board here. So as you can see uh, All I did was I pulled this back a little I'll show you on this one. It'll be easier so what I did was I pulled it back, held it tight against the side like I was going to drill it. And then all I did was put a mark there and then do the same on the bottom. That way I could draw a straight line up and down and know that I need to stay at least, you know, a sixteenth of an inch to the right of that. Just so I have enough room for the uh, screw and the nut and all that fun stuff. Uh, one other thing I found out, um, I was sitting here tightening down these... Uh, nuts over here and while I was doing it I'm sitting there thinking oh well you know what I might need to be careful and make sure you know I tighten them down you know tighten this one tighten this one tighten this one and just do like a half a turn each until I get it to where I wanted it and I was thinking well I might want to be careful because I might end up breaking the glass well as you can see there's a nice little hairline fracture there I broke the glass so, much like as you do on your iPhone, you break the glass, oh crap, oh well, nothing you can do about it. So, because this was just my beginning project, the first one, I'm not too worried about it, I can replace this easy enough. 
Uh, if it comes down to it, I have this right here, which is, a, you know, it's close enough to it. Uh, I could get the, um, the paper glue, or I don't know what it's called, but basically it's a really, really thin, double-sided, super freaking sticky. I could pull off the glass that's on there that broke and replace it with this, because I'm not too worried about the, I, I don't want the touch screen. I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, but I've made this so that I can take it apart and replace it in the future. So, anyway, enough about that. I'm going to drill the holes for this, slap it over top of that just to make sure this side doesn't come up either, and then I will get back to building this section. All right, give me a second. Okay, guys, I've done a little bit more work to it. As you can see, my work space in my living room is kind of getting messy including myself okay so uh where i left off i was attaching this last panel here which i finally got it attached and uh to keep it from cracking the screen on the other side i added a couple of nuts and a washer just to uh, give it some spacing and these nuts here all i did was get them to where i couldn't hand tighten it anymore and then i went a quarter turn more maybe even a half a turn and uh, where I was going to next, um, the next step that I had was the wiring, figuring out where all of this is going to sit, which that one particular one I still don't know what I'm going to do with. Um, but this in here, so far it's just coming in. Uh, I'm going to keep the HDMI mess behind or beside the battery. Uh, this thing doesn't move too much, and I don't want to strap it down just because I don't want to, you know, I want to be able to pull this out and put another one in if I need to. Uh, so I believe the last thing I said I was going to be doing was putting the panel there. And I actually, uh, like I said earlier, I just got the measurements that I wanted between here and here and here and here. And uh, I wound up cutting this little pane out. And uh, like I said earlier, I w there are some uh, ridges sticking up. And basically, it fits in there perfectly. So I am now going to set my Raspberry Pi underneath it, well, here, instead of sitting it on top and scratching it, uh, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to make sure that my Raspberry Pi is exactly where I want it underneath the uh, glass pane, and then I'm going to take my Sharpie here, mark where these, where these posts are so I can drill the holes in it, uh, drill through it, use longer screws than what came with the posts, and screw the Raspberry Pi to it. Um, after I do that, uh, because I don't want to put screws through where I got parts at, I actually, at my hardware store, bought these screws here. Yeah, that's Kanji. I'm in Japan. And I'm going to be measuring about a hundred times to make sure that I get this right. I even bought a special drill bit just for these. And, um, just so I can you know, make sure that I get it exactly where I want, and then I'm going to be drilling probably here where the handle's connected, just underneath, if I can do the measuring right, and two on the side here. Uh, I don't want to do more than that, because this is going to be a little bit of a pain to pull in and out. Um, yeah, and I don't want to risk cracking this, because it's... Let's put it this way, if you have a saw to cut this straight, do it. Don't use a Dremel like I have because that plastic is very hot and it kind of burns. All right, so now, so like I said, I'm gonna mark where these screws are, uh, drill the holes for, the, for this pane here, and hopefully get this mounted. And whenever I finish with that, all that I'll have left, uh, this thing has an audio jack out, so I'm gonna add an audio jack to it from my one of my boom boxes that I'm not using. Uh, so I'm just going to pull that from it, add an audio jack on the side so I can hook up headphones or, you know, if I have a, uh, a small speaker, I can, you know, hook it up to that. And then drill, drill a, uh, a window here so that I can actually hook up a controller to this. This isn't going to be, com you know, completely enclosed. I'd like it to be, but uh, this is just a, you know, a first setup, first build, trying to get it done to where it will work.
So that's where I'm at right now. And give me a second and you'll see a finished product, hopefully. Okay, so that took me a lot longer than I had anticipated. But as you can see, it's mounted. Um, I managed to get one screw in it. However, because of how uh, this box is made, the lip here gets in the way of actually drilling properly. So I had to very carefully drill that one out. I tried to drill that one out and blew the bottom out. So my fix, because this is not a, I'm going to give this to somebody. This is my personal one and yeah, uh, even though I don't like it. I used a bolt and uh, cut the excess off. So when this screw is removed, you can actually slide this panel out and then get to everything. So it's getting there. Uh, now all I gotta do is drill the hole in the side and add the audio and I'm done. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that and I will be back shortly. Okay guys, I just finished it up. Um, not bad. I mean all in all I think it took me six hours to do the whole thing today. Um, and you know most of that was just kind of looking at it going how am I going to get this the way I want it and of course uh, earlier my mismeasurement but that was easily fixed luckily it was on a uh, I didn't cut enough off instead of I uh, cut too much um, like I said the only problem I had was accidentally cracking the screen here but that was me applying too much force to it and too much pressure and not actually putting spacers in there so I mean that was that was my fault um, let me see. I got the audio. You can see it right here. Like I said, I like to have. An, I wanted to have this window so you could see what all's going on. Um, let's see, the screen is hooked up. I did that preemptively, but you know, let's plug it in. If I can get them turned, the come on. One hand, it doesn't work exactly the best, but you know, it's whatever. I cut the window in, so now I do have a port to put my controllers, ethernet cable, you know, whatever I need through it. That was easy enough, just drilling a couple of holes and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, look, you can see it turns on, it works. Um, using a Super Nintendo controller designed for a PC. Um, yeah, uh, the only thing I've noticed today is that the, uh, for some reason, the program keeps freezing up on me. Like, uh, the, it just doesn't register that the controller's there. So I think what I'm going to do is, now that I have everything hooked up and plugged in, I'm going to go in, set up the controller again, restart the system, and hopefully that will fix the problem. Because uh, it runs fine, it just stops reading the controller. Um, another thing I'm going to do is, uh, I don't know how well you can see it on the video, but there's a couple of tabs that stick out on this thing. There you go, you can see it. And uh, I need an angle on this to play it, because right now it just faces straight ahead, and that just kind of looks weird. So I'm going to go on, cut those off. It'll only take a couple of minutes to do that. Uh, once that's done, this will be 100% completed. Um, in the future, I might add, so, add an uh, audio board that's made for the Raspberry Pi. So if I do that, I'll definitely do a video on how to do that. Um, I am going to go through and paint these silver bolts black just because they kind of get on my nerves because it's, uh, it's just kind of a distraction around an all black case. But, oops, sorry. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this build. Uh, now all I got to do is make, figure out why my controller stops working every now and then. And after that, it will be... It'll be good. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little lengthy, but uh, if you're like me and you've looked up these things trying to figure out how to build one of these Raspberry Pi emulator boxes, uh, most of the time you're just going to come across uh, people showing off what they have, not how they do it. And, you know, if you've subscribed to my channel, you you know that I like to, you know, I'll show you the box and be like, oh, look, this is how, it, this is awesome, look what it is. And then I go through and do a, a, a build video. Um, so, I, you know, I hope I can help you guys, and you know, at least one person on how to build this. 
because um, this is the kind of stuff I love doing. So, you know what, if you like this video, hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. Um, you know, this is a fun build. You know, let me know what you think. And, uh, you know what, have a good one. Bye.